Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Day two of the Zero Project Conference 2023. And I'm very excited um, to have uh, very distinguished speakers with me today. And I can guarantee you that everyone watching this online has a childhood memory or moment associated with the company we'll hear more from. It's, you might have heard of it, a small uh, startup burger chain called <laughs> McDonald's. And uh, we're very delighted to have them with us to hear a bit more about their accessible packaging initiative. But I'd like to start um, by, of course, introducing our speakers. So to the left, to the right of me, to the left of you on your screens is Mita Zakaria, International Director for DEI at McDonald's. And to the right of Mita is Carlos Terrazos, Terrazos Global Disability Inclusion Manager at McDonald's as well. And DEI is this big term which is thrown around a lot, diversity, equity, inclusion. But what does DEI actually mean to McDonald's? Let me start with that and uh, I'll pass on to Mita and I think she'll tell us a bit more about it. Thank you so much. Thanks, Robin. Um, it's absolute pleasure to be here with you all today um, with my colleagues and it's our first experience of this wonderful conference. So thank you to the Zero Project team. Um, and we really hope that this is the start of our relationship as we um, explore further across the wider, wide ecosystem of disability inclusion. Um, you know, having equitable access to opportunity um, is something that's, that's fundamental um, to what we strive to offer um, at McDonald's, um, whether as a customer, as an employee, franchise or supply partner. So um, we're really privileged, I think, to be here and, and um, really the sheer amount of innovation that's happening to remove barriers is, is exemplary. So our efforts across um, diversity, equity, and inclusion are really interwoven through our business um, and our business strategy. And um, that's imperative to make sure we're, we're kind of building sustainable efforts. So it's not a standalone effort. Um, and we really look to ensure that there are five key stakeholder groups within this. Um, so across our employees, our customers, our franchisees, supplier partners, and also within the communities in which we operate. Um, so it's very holistic. And I would say that, you know, as you said, everyone has a childhood memory of McDonald's. You know, we operate um, across over 100 countries in the world. And our aspiration really is no matter where you are in the world, um, your experience with the Golden Arches is, is an inclusive one um, and fully accessible. So, and we really look to drive this um, through our kind of five key values and inclusion is, is really one of them that underpins um, our others of serve, integrity, family and, and community. So those values guide the way that our business operates, it guides um, the way that we interact with our partners and we really prioritise um, our approach through kind of three key strategic pillars and, and this is really important because the way that we approach our strategy with our scale um, is has to be relevant to all of our markets. Um, so we talk about being representative of the cultures and communities and when we operate, um, accelerating cultures of inclusion and belonging and dismantling barriers to economic opportunity. And across our markets, you know, the strategies that are being formed and being developed are really kind of um, underpinning those three strategic um, pillars. And that's inclusive of our disability inclusion strategy. So I will hand to Carlos to talk more about that um, in more detail. Yeah, thank, thank you, Misa, for that. And, and Robin, thank you for having us here. This, this has been an amazing experience so far. <clears throat> One that I hope we, we continue to repeat in the, in the upcoming years and really uh, show our, you know, our, our, our goals through, through this conference uh, in the future. Um, but, you know, with, with what Mita was just kind of, you know, relaying in our DI strategic pillars, um, you know, I, I was very fortunate to come into the organization to build a disability inclusion strategy that undermines that uh, GDI strategic pillars. So, um, I know I, I come from a social model of disability perspective, and that's kind of how we've been able to uh, push messages across the system here at McDonald's to, through that lens uh, with our disability inclusion group, which is our uh, newest founded uh, EBN, or Employee Business Network. So through those five key staker, stakeholder groups that Mita mentioned, um, there's five focus areas that really will help us move the needle in this space. But nevertheless, 
you know, acknowledging that every market is a different phase in a different setting. Every franchisee is doing work that uh, is great, um, or you know, they're barely beginning. Same with market, etc. So, you know, it's a really phased approach to this, and kind of meeting markets where where their needs are. So, um, I'll I'll give a you know I'll give the 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 focus area, and then I'll try to give a couple examples of how we're showing up in, in these in these stakeholder groups. So, for example, with with our employees, we're we're really focusing on um, fully incorporating uh, resources and and tools for them to um, you know have an uh, an inclusive experience at McDonald's and to really go out and rec and recruit. Uh, and, and hire and then you know promote people with disabilities at all levels. Um, so a little bit of how that's looking that, like that right now is we're, we're about to launch a centralized uh, adjustments or in the US we call it our accommodations process where it really you know narrows down who's assessing these requests and you know how we're paying for them. So there's a centralized fund to it as well. And you know, the goal there is to have a seamless experience and at the same time, you know, have accountability to what we're doing and not having, you know, one experience be better than the other because one department did it better and one not. So, you know, having the same same goals and same ambitions, you know, through that lens. Um, another uh, key, key stakeholder group that we have is our franchisees. And so uh, while we give them a lot of autonomy and, and you know, like I said earlier, there, there's some that are doing great work in this space, some that are starting. We really want to give them the resources to have, you know, access to how to hire more people with disabilities in their restaurants, how to attain them, making sure the turnover is not high there. Uh, so the goal is to eventually provide them with, you know, that, that key playbook or a resource that, you know, can be localized to markets, um, but you know, nevertheless, there's holistic ideas and, and great resources for them to gather. How that is looking that live, you know, we, we do have uh, corporate-owned stores, and last late last year, we launched a pilot from the Romeoville uh, Innovation Center or Innovation Restaurant, and we partnered with a state agency to help us attain more, more people with disabilities at the restaurant level. Um, and, you know, I think within two to three months, we were able to get at least four people and, and hire them. You know, a restaurant that had a lot of turnover and I had a, a lot of employment gaps. So, um, you know, the success, you know, showed up in, in those two, three months, but, you know, there's more work to be done. And, and really, we're looking to scale it to uh, other Macapco restaurants. Um, with our customers, uh, that this is a, you know, this is a very unique stakeholder group because we also have a digital accessibility team who, um, you know, really focuses on the customer experience. And, you know, big shout out to them. They're, they're great partners with me and, and our, our DEI team to ensure that, you know, whatever we're, we're setting out to, to be on our mission with our customers, they're, they're part of it as well. Um, one, of the, one of the things that, you know, one of the many things that they've been really successful at is implementing a new kiosk that allows you know not only for reach mode, so wheelchair users can uh, lower the screen and have access to that, or you know, magnification, but, uh, a magnifier, sorry, that you know enlarges the text in the kiosk. But uh, the newest and most up-to-date uh, software that is called Audio Nav, and that allows for blind users or you know low vision users to plug in headphones to the kiosk and navigate the kiosk independently and have a, you know, an inclusive experience that way. Uh, many work, m much more work to be done there. Um, and, and, you know, shout out to that team again because they have their, their hands full. Um, and then suppliers, you know, from a GDI standpoint, we launched a mutual commitment to this. And that's really inviting our suppliers to join us in this DEI journey and, and you know, have some accountability to their businesses. Uh, and there's no, no rewriting the script there for, you know, disability. It's just going out there and also partnering with dis disabled owned enterprises and ensuring that we're giving them business as well. Um, and then last but not least is our communities. So simple as this, you know, showing up to events like these, 
uh, where we're, we have presence and we, you know, we can showcase these, these types of initiatives, you know, partnering with other community organizations that are local to those, those uh, markets. For example, Argentina partners with NGOs to really focus on hiring in the restaurants and they've done great work in that space. Um, you know, we also partner with community organizations in Chicago and we have someone here from, from there in Access Living and you know, really understanding what the community is, is challenged with and how we can you know, uh, dismantle those barriers. But uh, that's kind of a little bit of, of the work that we're, we're doing here. And like I said, this is a very phased approach. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll launch things in the US, we'll launch things elsewhere and, and see what works and just continue to innovate there. Thank you for those insights, uh, Mita and Carlos, and also thank you for the shout out to Karen Tamley, the CEO of Access Living, who's doing great work. And uh, I think this fireside chat is a good indicator or a good um, also a way to highlight, come to the conference, because then you'd also be able to join our site visit on Friday, where McDonald's will take you to one of the stores here in Austria, highlighting how they are ensuring independent living and ensuring that both employees and managers uh, with disabilities are featured and are um, embedded in the stores. Now, we would be doing a terrible job if we had a fireside chat about accessible packaging and we didn't talk about accessible packaging. So uh, let us get to that initiative. And specifically, um, if I'm not mistaken, it is the Eat Quell initiative in India. Yes. And I think we're all visual learners as well. So we'll pull up an image of uh, that accessible packaging and perhaps, Mita, you could uh, walk us through how this came together and maybe also audio describe it for those um, who are not able to see the image on their screen. Yes, absolutely. So um, for those who can't see, this is um, a white hexagonal packaging um, which um, has um, a burger within it um, with uh, Eats Quell as, as, the, um, as the label. So. As you say, this was an initiative that came out of McDonald's India, southwestern Wales. It was launched in 2020, and, and we really just wanted to highlight this. I, I guess the context being that, um, you know, 2% of the population in India have um, a disability. And um, I think what they discovered is 5.4 million people were struggling with um, disability movement, a significant proportion of those were people with limited upper limb mobility. So the impetus behind launching this packaging was really how do we help those customers, um, you know, have an equal and an accessible experience um, when they come to visit us. So, you know, this is a packaging that only needs one hand to open um, and is and they're able to to then enjoy um, our food. And I guess the important thing is when when building the the packaging, the principle of um, of um, not about us, but with us was followed. So it was definitely um, in, you know, designed with members of the disability community within India. Um, and it was really carefully, intentionally designed and, and tested. So it's a long-term project and there's been evolution over the last three years um, with the way that, you know, that the packaging has been received. Um, but I, I think it was, yeah, just one that we wanted to highlight really um, in terms of how we are looking to evolve our our accessibility um, to the brand. Fantastic. And could I walk into another market or a restaurant and get one of these maybe in Austria or elsewhere? So at not the moment, if I'm honest, um, packaging innovations like this, I think, are, are not specific for every single market. But what we are encouraging, certainly with the Global Accessibility Center of Excellence, is that um, markets should be looking at how we um, provide more accessible um, design and there's certain principles that that we need to follow. Um, but we, as as we said, we we continue on our journey of accessible technology and and product design um, as Very a well. business. And I think if if not anything else, McDonald's is efficient. So we are close to running out of time. So I'd love to give Carlos um, an opportunity to take a brief takeaway, something which our online audience should know about McDonald's and accessibility, which they might not know. Yet, yeah. Th thanks for the question. Um, you know, I, I think it's important to realize that while we are in over a hundred countries and, and you know we serve so many people per day, our our experiences are different. And so, what you see, what might you have available in the U.S. 
might not be the same that you have in Austria. And where, so we're, in, we're just in a journey overall to be the most uh, accessible brand we could be. But, you know, it's a very phased approach and, and we just have to be very patient, you know, and, and use our scale to ensure that we're doing it right. So um, while the progress won't be overnight, um, we, we, you know, we're striving little by little, step by step, to ensure that at least every year we're, we're moving forward in this direction. So, um, you know, that's kind of like the goal and, and that will continue to be the goal as long as, uh, you know, we're working in this space. Thank you very much, Mita. Thank you very much, Carlos. And thank you very much to our online audience. Have a great day and see you hopefully in person at the next Zero Project conference. Thank you. Thank you.